Hi, my name is Nero Patel and my student ID is ESN3073. Um, we are doing a group presentation of uh, business and corporate law. Uh, we are explaining a case about uh, ASIC versus Narayan 2008. The full form of ASIC is Australian Security and Investment Commission and Narayan is the chief director of the company Citrofs uh, International Limited. Um, in this case, um, the Citrofs International Limited <coughs> make one announcement on uh, to the ASX, the Australian Security Exchange, on 27th of September 2005, that um, uh, they mention in announcement about regarding the four major viruses, HIV and AIDS. And uh, in this case, the ASIC was successfully in its appeal against the order of George Bajay, who has uh, dismissed the claim against the director of uh, Citrofes International Limited, Mr. Narayan, Ravi Narayan. The order was set aside by the federal court. Um, after then, it was held by the full federal court that the judge had made an error in arriving at the conclusion, like the judge made the wrong decision, uh, that the announcement made to the Australian Security Exchange was not related with the financial product due to the reason that the content of the statement did not refer to or uh, deal with a share of the company. Like when the company make announcement at the time, the company share is going at high level. Like the before the company share is like 22.5 cent, and after this announcement, it goes to 0.70 cent. So uh, it goes on the peak level. So the court start uh, start that the, there was a sufficient. A connection present between the statement and the share of the company because the content of the statement was stated with the business of the company and the statement was published on the exchange where the share of the company were traded and also when they make announcement and uh, it's approved by the Mr. Ravi Narayan after then Mr. Ravi Narayan sent this uh, information to the Australian Security Exchange and after, um, instead of that Australian Security Exchange asked him some question and in this uh, Australian Security Exchange proved that uh, the information in the announcement is not related to the core of the HIV. So after that the company share was decreased, decreased. Uh, thanks for that and the rest part of uh, is expensing explaining with my colleague. Thank you. Thank you, Neva. Uh, so, my name is Debbie Kay and my student ID is PFEC3479. So, I will explain the rest of the part. In this part, I will explain first you the section 1041H. According to this section, no one has any right to pass the financial statements to the public, which is misleading the public. In this case, as my friend has already mentioned, Citrofresh company has made a false announcement uh, that according to, uh, in relation to the four products which, create, uh, which are related to the four viruses including the HIV and the AIDS. Due to this, this, false, due to this false announcement, the company's shares boost up in the night at a high level. It rises from 0.25 to 0.75. So in this case, Mr. Narayan, who was the uh, who was the director of company Citra Fresh, was held personally responsible for the breach of the section 1041H because he has misled the people of the Corporation Act. Even if Mr. Narayan had not personally sent the announcement, will be ASX. It means that's not a problem that he has sent to the Australian uh, Australian Securities Exchange this uh, information, but due to the director of the company, he is also liable to the consequences which will be feared by him. And this case highlights the significance of making sure that the public statements made by the corporations are not misleading or deceptive. This section has protected the public, that if any, any person has misled the public regarding the financial statements, then we have to ensure that the, this section will be 
uh, used by the company to protect the interest of the public. Similarly, this case also provides guidance regarding the situation where the officers of the company can be held personally responsible, which means this section provides, a pu provides public in surety that the uh, company, not itself, but the employers and the officers of the company are also responsible for the consequences bear by the public. So they are also reliable for the any consequences or any losses held by the public due to this announcement. For the misleading statements that have been made by the company. So the officers and the employers are also liable to bear the losses. Thank you. And rest of the part will explain by my friend Jayati. Thank you. Thank you, Devi. Uh, my name is Jayati Maharsan and my student ID is RIA 3018. So I'm going to continue with the rest of the presentation. Okay. Uh, the action was initiated by ASIC under Section 1041H of the Corporation Act. So according to the section, a person must not be engaged in uh, any conduct or behavior uh, regarding the financial product or services, uh, uh, which is described as uh, misleading or deceptive. So uh, while overturning the earlier decision, the term in relation to was uh, widely interpreted by the court. Therefore, it was held that an indirect or less than substantial collection present between the conduct and the financial product or the service offered by the company is uh, sufficient and it is not necessary that a direct relationship to the present with the product or the ser service offered by the company. So the court also stated that the present case the managing director of the company was uh, personally responsible for the breach of the section 1041H uh, because he had authorized the release of the announcement to the ASS. Um, so the rest of the part will be explained by uh, Sophie. Thank you. I am and now I will going to explain this uh, other part and uh, I will explain the conclusion part. Uh, what the conclusion is great. The clear protocol should be uh, present in case of listed companies in order to make sure that the statement was released to the ASX are complete uh, and accurate because liability may arise under uh, S1041 at regarding a statement. I, I, I would be li like to know you that the S uh, represents the section part of 1041 uh, statement. If there is no direct reference in the statement of the securities of the company, at the same time, the principal should also consider the regarding of the public announcement made by the corporation. Uh, in including the statements made on the website of the company, that can be considered as having any relations with security of the company. Now, any person can be held personally responsible under Section 1041H if such person is uh, the authorized person who having the knowledge of the contents of the statement. Prepared instructor authorized release of the misleading or respective statements. So uh, uh, this, uh, the authorized person have to uh, give the clearance of the, uh, the statements. On the basis of the decision provided in this case, it can be stated that section 1041 will continue to have a wide application. So there are a number of the applications uh, considered by the uh, 1041 section. Uh, the reason is that among their other things, the word in relation to have been interpreted widely. So that the word uh, uh, interpreted the wide uh, meanings of the application. So as the cover a wide range of conduct associated with sales and the provision can be used again not only the company but also the directors and officers of the corporation in their personal capacity. So the section should be uh, uh, illustrated by the authorized person. This is the reference we used for to explain the case.